the jewelry thing um, kind of came about because my grandmother and grandfather are jewelers. So I'm considered a third generation. There's people in my family. And um, one of my apprenticeships was from somebody that had done jewelry for family 150 years. Um, and literally. <laughs> and um, it was Native American uh, reservation type thing that I did. And I really wanted to learn the old ways. But I ended up quickly going into the bench jeweler scene, you know, the engagement ring, the mall store. And um, it was very monotonous. You see the same thing. You see stuff that there's no thought into it. It's just like stamp, 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 stamp. I'm really into, I think, uh, old pathons and stuff like that. There's a lot of inspiration to be drawn from that kind of thing. And I kind of just went with the whole storyline. The Beatles and the Bugs kind of had um, an Egyptian flair to it, you know. But also, I really like the idea of taking, I don't know, they had pets, you know, over there and stuff. And they just put jewels all over them. They walk around. It's like, I would love to have a big old beetle with just a bunch of jewels and stuff kind of you know walking around hey how's it going love those crystals you know what I mean um well the cameo skull kind of came from a, a whole different I'm a child of the 80s so that means I'm listening to a lot of 90s girl riot and nothing is more profound I think to any girl that actually is seeing pop culture um when you when you see the whole emphasis on being beautiful on the outside but it doesn't really matter if you're dead on the inside who wants to be all I don't know, like that. But the cameo skull, you know, it's all pretty and the hair is done. And it's got a flower, but it's a skull, you know, and that's kind of what I was representing by that design. And um, I think that the Nicodemus and the dragons and all of the skulls and everything is completely separate from that, even though people see it as the same. They see a skull in the center of an oval or a square or whatever. Um, I see a completely different inspiration altogether. And the cameo skull kind of came from childhood and um, teenage angst and just you know, not being happy with the fact that I have to look like that, but I don't want to look like that, you know. The Dothraki stuff is, uh, I don't know, it's fun because it's so big, and I like really big jewelry, obviously, so I have lots of room to do whatever I want with it. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to go definitely in that direction, but also, I, I think I make a new something or other, at least in my mind every day, so there's bowls and bowls of things I want to do. <laughs> Influence from others is definitely um, something, I mean, that's always relevant, but usually people come to me and they say, I want this and this and this, can you make it your way? And so that obviously helps, you know, um, but I kind of draw inspiration from people in my life more than anything, or people that have passed, and that's kind of what I think about more when I design instead of, you know, that person, but if I do know that person, it, it's heavily influenced. Um, it's, I think that it's kind of like my thing with, you know, mixtures and ingredients from them, you know, so it does help, but I kind of try to keep with my kind of feel for it. You know what I mean? Like I want it to be able to be something I could pick up and put against all my other stuff. And they say, yeah, that goes together. You'll see a lot of glamour with all the rhinestones. And then you see like native American, that goth feel. Um, I think I'm inspired by pretty much everything that I've experienced. And then my grandmother, um, she made jewelry and she did a lot of um, Native American stuff, but then a lot of Art Nouveau. So she was kind of like, whoa, two different things. And it is a bunch of different things, but whenever one person, when it comes from one person, it's still cohesive. Well, I like to think of this as a museum storage space, but I also sketch in here and, you know, get stuff, you know, put together. But um, a lot of things, my grandmother used to do something called morguing. I do that. You get magazines and you find a design or something that influences you or kind of makes you go, I love this tear it out and you morgue it you know you keep it the rest of the thing is recycled you know um i do a lot of that in here i keep pictures writings and then a lot of old evil pawn jewelry designs and stuff like that um so it's a storage museum sketch area where i keep everything if i did bring anything back or if i do um i change it and make it a different edition um be like this is edition three or edition four um because i want it still to be kind of um special um non-conveyor beltish, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Um, and the main goal, I think, um, is to be sought and not soaked. Everything's oversaturated. Everything's overdone. I would rather someone say, oh my God, is that edition one? They haven't made those since this year. I want one. Can I buy that off you? Let's trade. And I found out two girls, actually, that I have, you know, worked with in the past. They both traded their editions, uh, their demonia editions. They used to come in turquoise and used to come in pearls, and now it's black. And 
yeah, they kind of did a swap. And I'm like, nah, -uh, no. You know, that's kind of cool that one wanted the other. I have lots of, you know, designs that are considered darker, but it's because they come from a situation that I really don't want to purge through, you know, like methods that most people don't want to, like drinking or emotion eating why do that when you can take this dark thing and create you can destroy all things that ail you with creation and that's maybe why some of it i guess has a darker theme but a skull they're so important because if we didn't have one we'd be mushy faced people i love when people say i don't like skulls well you have one you own one you were given one at birth chill out you know become i guess the best thing is to become the person you're supposed to be um, use negative and make it positive. Do not add to it. And um, the worst thing in the world is looking at something and judging it automatically. You know, you see a tattooed person, I guess, for lack of a better term, and then there's much worse things. You know, race, sexuality, sex, anything. Um, quickly judging, you only hurt yourself. It's just like a deep thought of everything bad can be good. All we have to do is do a job, you know? And that's Evil Pawn right there. <laughs>